to see us at Lannis. Uh, uh, Carlos, uh, in about two revs, it'll be a good pass over uh, Peru. Uh, unfortunately, it'll be dark. Hey, good morning, Bill, and uh, thank you for playing the uh, national anthem there. I hadn't heard that uh, since I was down there last summer, and unfortunately it will be dark, but I got a, a good debut uh, the other uh, night uh, just before we fell asleep. Okay, and I, uh, Mike and I have been transitioning uh, and having some good pass down. Mike is very well situated, uh, specters in perfect order, and uh, we've, I think on this mission, uh, done it both ways. We've got shuttle in good order, and we also have Mike in good order on mirror. Uh, we're just doing a few loose ends and uh, a review of what's already been covered, and so we're in very good shape, and uh, good job to everybody on the ground that helped support that. Thanks, Jerry. We'll pass along those words. Joining us from the, the Space Hab module on uh, the Space Shuttle, 10 people who consider themselves among the luckiest in the world today, the joint crew of Mir and Shuttle Atlantis. Shuttle Commander Charlie Precourt, ground controllers, ground controllers tell us both the spaceships are working well together. What's your assessment of the health of Mir now compared to what you knew about it a year ago? Well, let's see. Uh you know, the mirror has gone through a few uh, maintenance problems here in the recent uh, few months, as everyone is aware. Uh, I could compare it for you with what I experienced a couple of years ago when I docked with the mission of STS-71. Uh, I would say that it is not much different overall, and uh, with the exception that they've added two more modules, uh, they have more volume, but they have also more equipment on board now. I'd say the health is in really good shape at this point, uh, and they've recovered nicely from the failures of the last couple of months. Well, that's, that's certainly good news. Eileen Collins, you were the shuttle pilot getting up, and you'll be the pilot coming down again. I'd like your assessment as uh, to how crowded it is on Mir compared to the shuttle and the place where you are right now. Is it, is it as much like Fibber McGee's closet with just uh, wires and pipes falling out all over the place as uh, some of the pictures we have seen led us to believe? Well, actually, Mir is a lot more spacious than the shuttle. It has more interior volume. Um, this shuttle flight, the Atlantis, has a space tab in the back, which adds to our volume. Um, I would have to say that living in space, whether you're on the shuttle or Mir, you're going to have a lot of, of equipment around, equipment to, for cooling and maintenance of the spaceship, as well as scientific experiments, which is why we're up here. So, yes, both spaceships are a little bit cluttered, but... I would say it's an environment that I enjoy being in, and I'm having a great time up here, and I know we're contributing uh, very well to uh, science, uh, international science, and uh, the health of people around the world uh, with the mission that we're doing up here. Yeah, I've got a question for the two rookie astronauts, Carlos Noriega and Ed Liu. They have been doing much of the heavy lifting of equipment back and forth between the two ships, and, and both are rookies. The transfer seems to be well ahead of schedule, fellas, which means you're doing your jobs well. Carlos, I'd like your impressions and maybe then Ed's impressions of launch and your thoughts today about what you're going to remember most about this trip. Well, it's just an incredible feeling being on our first mission, uh, especially with this group of people here. i got a great crew that I belong to, and we've got some great friends on the Mir. Uh, we'd had a chance to work with them before we came up here, and uh, just being able to renew that friendship and continue to work together is just great as a, an international cooperative uh, effort that we have here. Um, the reason things have been going so smoothly is probably because of the hard work of uh, the other rookie here who's been in charge of uh, the transfer operations. I'll let him talk a little bit. Well, there's a lot of really memorable things, of course, about flying in space, from the launch to looking out the window, seeing the Earth go by, to the docking day, when we uh, first saw a mirror from more than about uh, 30 or 40 miles away. But uh, surprisingly enough, you know, what I think the most memorable thing about all of this is the people around me, the people I've gotten to work with for the last year, and my friends from Russia, who we first met almost a year ago. Uh, they're a really special group of people. They work really hard. 
and uh, I'll, I'll always remember this, just mostly for the people, I think. Yeah, the other, the other day, we saw a picture of all of you eating dinner together. It was a, this big international meal, and the microphone was left on while you guys were there, and it was sort of like a fraternity house party. I mean, a lot of hooping and hollering going on. Is that really what the spirit is like when you guys aren't lined up in front of TV cameras like this and everybody has to be on their best behavior? Well, John, that was uh, initially intended as a home movie. But we had uh, such spontaneous good time with our international colleagues that we felt we ought to share it with everyone. Uh, we work pretty hard up here, and we asked the timeliners for this mission to set aside a couple of hours where we could have an international meal, and our crew prepared a lot of different types of foods from around the world to bring up and uh, share with our Russian colleagues and Jerry, and uh, they managed to find the time for us. So we went over and uh, relaxed for a little bit, and we turned on the video camera and let it run, and uh, we wanted you to see that uh, life in space can be enjoyable, even though we're doing a lot of work. Uh, folks need to take a break from time to time to keep their energy up, and uh, that's what we were doing. We wanted you to see that. Yeah, well, Charlie, the thing that everybody is saying in this interview is uh, how well everybody's getting along together, despite the fact there are different cultures represented there on the spaceship, and that party sort of indicated that to me. I want to talk to Jerry Leninger and Mike Fole next. The two of you have traded jobs this week, Leninger moving to the shuttle crew for the trip back home, and Fole joining the Mir crew for another long-duration stay in orbit. Jerry, you and I have talked a couple of times during this mission about your family, your personal life, but we have haven't talked uh, directly since the fire and the series of equipment failures. Tell us about Mir. Is it working as well today as the day you arrived more than four months ago? We've had difficulties throughout those four months, but I think we've overcome it. And I think it's, uh, at this point, yeah, I'd say we're back to the, uh, the condition uh, that we were at when I arrived. On the other hand, I think Mike is going to have a challenge ahead of him, and uh, you know it's part of the exploration process out here. We're pushing the limits, and it's uh, tough being out on the frontier. So Mike's got a challenge ahead for him. Yeah, Jerry. Before you hand the mic over to uh, to Mike Fole, what it, what was the best advice that you think you gave to uh, uh, to Mike Fole as he came aboard, or in the few days you've had to sort of cross pollinate? Mike's really experienced, courageous, uh, you know, well-traveled space traveler. So uh, I guess the, the thing I did more for Mike is just show him around, show him uh, where the equipment is, some of the little things that I learned over the uh, four or five months up here, and just giving him little pointers that I think uh, a month from now he'll say, oh, yeah, I remember Jerry telling me something about that. And, and just make his life a little more pleasant up here by learning some little tricks of uh, living in space. Yeah, Mike Fole, a couple of weeks ago, you told us you were much more worried about the shuttle launch than about a long time stay on Mir. Uh, has anything happened in the past few days to change your opinion of Mir for better or for worse? Oh, you're quite right. The, uh, the biggest risk that we all went through was launch, and that includes the cosmonauts also. But uh, no, I, I've been pleasantly surprised here. In fact, uh, I'm now realizing rapidly that the, uh, the food is even better than I first thought it was going to be. So I'm enjoying very much just having regular meals with uh, Vasily here and, and Sasha across there from Elena. And uh, we, we have a very relaxed and easygoing relationship. I think um, when you're on board a space station rather than a space shuttle, you, you basically live. And so you have to have regular meals, and you. I've, I've noticed the difference even already. Um, the shuttle guys are having to work to a timeline that's compressed. They have to get back on Earth. And um, the beauty of, of being here with uh, a long-term cruise is you get to relax and uh, think about the long term and, and enjoy your meals, enjoy your conversations, pace your workouts. And so it's uh, actually quite a new way to work, and uh, I'm enjoying this transition. And Mike, one last question. What is the best that you can accomplish in your four and a half months on Mir? What do you think? What, what's the best you can do while you're there? Well, I, this sounds flippant, but I'll say it. Have a good time. I, I really think that's the most important thing here. Um, I'm quite efficient, efficient anyway, getting my uh, scientific work done, and I'll do that anyway. The most important thing is that all of us, the three of us on board the station and the, uh, the, the three new guys that come up uh, in August, that we all get along together and uh, enjoy each other's company. Atlantis Mir crew, thank you.
открыто. Мы поздравляем тебя с днем рождения. Я желаю тебе самого наилучшего. Ну и то, что ты делаешь для совместной работы Мир Шаттл, это очень хорошее и нужное дело. Главное здоровье, счастье, красоты, улыбок и побольше цветов. Надо же, Василий все сказал. Все, что я хотел. Я присоединяюсь к его поздравлениям. Желаю счастья в жизни и любви. Летчика, я присоединяюсь, конечно, к поздравлениям ребят. Я знаю тебя, наверное, больше, чем все здесь присутствующие уже много-много лет. Я э, желаю, чтобы ты всегда оставался такой же молодой, жизнерадостной, веселой, неунывающей. И все еще тебе самого наилучшего. До встречи. And for all those on the American side, we're uh, wishing Luda Nikolaev a, a happy 50th birthday today. She's uh, the Russian timeliner who's worked so hard to put our schedules together up here and make them work uh, jointly between the U.S. and Russian sides. Luda, поздравляю с днем рождения. Thank you.